Hi, welcome to this talk about Redis Gears. Um, my name is Peter Caillou. I'm a product manager at Redis Labs, product managing Redis Gears. And today I will be co-hosting a talk with Mare. Um, Mare is a software architect and also the creator um, of Redis Gears. So Redis Gears was announced by um, Yiftach in the keynote to be generally available. Um, and this talk will be effectively talking about the, service, the serverless engine you've been uh, creating for, for Redis. So in the first part, I will talk about why uh, why we created Redis Gears, and then I will hand it over to Mayer. He will talk about the, the internals, how does it effectively work, how does it work in Redis cluster. Um, we'll give some examples about event processing, and then also he'll talk about our first recipe, um, which is a set of functions um, that is available for Redis Gears, um, which is uh, right behind. Um, he will also give a demo about that, and effectively there will be many, many demos in, in his part. So, um, but first, um, Redis Gears. Why Redis Gears? So, I'm going to walk you through to three examples of um, uh, things you can currently do um, with Redis, um, but there's some kind of a way they're a bit cumbersome. Um, so the first one, the first example is, um, for example, you want to capture change in Redis. So your application is just simply setting a document inside uh, Redis with an H set a command and we're setting it uh, uh, foo bar in, inside Redis. So you would like to capture the, uh, the update there. Um, so to do some post-processing. Um, so you, for example, for that post-processing, you could write it back into a backend database. Now, the way to do that in Redis is by using key space notifications. Um, but the problem with key space notifications is that they're fire and forget. So the moment your connection drops, you might not receive all um, key space notifications. So it's not a reliable solution. So the second example uh, is what if you would like to average all the elements inside uh, lists matching the, uh, the rating prefix. Um, so we would like to iterate over all the lists that match effectively um, the specific prefix. So the, the, the one way to do this is effectively your application is asking Redis to give you all that data. It's going to return all the data and then you will, at client side or application side, you will process that data. You might see or understand that it's quite cumbersome and might take a while. Now, Lua, uh, sorry, Redis also supports Lua. So you can effectively send a Lua script to Redis and then you can effectively let Redis do that uh, processing. And the calculation and you only return the results to your application. Now there's a problem with Lua. Lua doesn't um, fetch data across shards so it needs to stay uh, or it can only access the data that lives within its own process so it doesn't work into a clustered database. There must be a better solution for this. The third example is, a, is an event processing or a stream processing example. Um, so your application is writing some message into a stream and then there's a stream processing component on the right hand side that is effectively consuming the stream. So now it might be that um, your stream processor needs some, some reference data. So it's going to ask, for example, for a reference key, um, and then the reference data is returned, and then it might effectively write back um, that message into a new stream. So it's, for example, it's, it's going to um, divide uh, a main input stream into several uh, smaller um, um, streams down the line. Um, as you can see, there are some, some, some data fetching, there's a sub couple of round trips uh, from your stream processing engine back into Redis. And it might even just not stay into writing back into a stream, it might also be writing back into another data structure or using one of the modules uh, with their uh, more advanced data structures such as Redis Search, uh, Redis Graph, Redis Bloom, Redis Time Series. The point is that you're doing quite some round trips to your stream processing engine and there might be a better way of doing that maybe within Redis. So that's why we created Redis Gears. Um, Redis Gears is a service engine for transaction, batch, and event-driven data processing inside Redis. And there's one more side note to this that effectively it's also abstracting the data, data distribution and choice of deployment. So Redis Gears has an API, an internal API, that allows you to fetch data um, and it doesn't need to know or you don't need to know if that uh, piece of data resides in our shard or it is in the shard effectively that uh, your, your function is being executed. So what are the benefits um, of Redis Gears? So it gives you infinite 
programmability options. Um, as long as you can code it, uh, you can run it within within Redis. So currently we, we just support Python, uh, but soon we'll also have support for the JVM and for WebAssembly, um, and then languages such as Java and, and Rust can be supported as well. It simplifies your architecture. Um, in the example where we had our stream processing engine uh, outside Redis, we can effectively now do that within Redis, so we have less components in our architecture. Your serverless engine also runs with your data, so you'll you'll be able to process data faster um, because there is no uh, um, um, there are no round trips to, to to fetch reference data. And you can write it once, and then effectively you can deploy it um, in in any. Um, Redis infrastructure of your choice. So you can effectively develop against your own local Redis instance and later on when your data database grows and you need a, a cluster database, your script will keep on working. So you could ask like when, when should I effectively use um, Redis Gears? So the first use case is fast data processing. Um, whenever there's a need or there's a higher there's, there's, there's always a higher demand to process data faster, right? So because there's data locality, um, um, you don't have to fetch that data, that reference data in your stream processing engine. You can effectively run it within uh, Redis. Um, fast data processing is a good, uh, a good use case for Redis Gears. You can also orchestrate AI transactions. AI transactions, they, for example, they need to create from some, some, some set or some, some reference data, they need to create a certain tensor before they can feed it into uh, uh, an, an AI model. Um, today we also announced Redis AI and Redis Gears can effectively allow you to, to orchestrate um, some of those transactions that you want to build uh, with the Redis AI. When you would like to do cross data structures operations. Um, so imagine for example that a message comes in into a stream and you would like to apply that both to your search index but also into um, your, your graph uh, database. So effectively, Redis Gears can do that. They can, uh, um, uh, you can script the transformations that need to happen on that message to be applied to both uh, data structures. It also adds reliable event processing. Um, so you can effectively um, attach a, a function onto a key space notification, um, and you can allow that to be reliable. So whenever you write into a set, we can, for example, make sure that that um, uh, that update is also being added into a stream um, and it's going to be uh, all or nothing, right? So it's going to be either you have the message in, uh, sorry, you have the data in your set and in the stream or you don't have it at all. So and that adds to um, our first uh, use case, um, our first recipe. So um, right behind, so what what is right behind? Um, right behind, effectively, you will have a front-end database on top of your, 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 your relational database or whatever database, your back-end database you're using for your application. Um, but you're using Redis as a front-end database, so you're reading from Redis. However, for your writes, you still have to go to your, 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 your back-end database. So what if you could also write inside um, Redis 4? Why would you do that? To offload your primary database, um, to, to spread the writes to flatten peaks, and to batch multiple writes uh, into your backend database, and also to have low write rate latency, right? Um, so your your application um, can reply to your user faster because uh, um, um, you write into into Redis. Um, so for that, we now have a recipe available, um, and and Mayor will talk about that uh, uh, more later on. And with that, I would like to hand it over to to Mayor, the creator of Redis Gears. Thanks, Peter. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Meir, and I'm one of the developers of uh, Redis Gears. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about how Redis Gears works and what you can do with it. Uh, I'm going to show you lots of examples and demos, and uh, it's going to be fun. So uh, let's get started. Um, so before I will talk to you about how Redis Gears works, I want to, to explain the abstraction that Redis Gears provide. So what, what Redis Gears allows you to do is to create a pipe of operations such that the data inside Redis pass through this pipe and eventually return to the user as the result. Now we call this pipe a gear function and you can uh, create this pipe using a Python API. Redis gives one an embedded Python interpreter so you can use this embedded Python interpreter to create this Redis, this gears function, this pipe. 
or you can directly interact with Redis Gears CAPI and create those pipes using a CAPI. Now the pipe, as I said, uh, contain operations and each operation can modify the data. Here, for example, I have a map operation and the map operation, this is an abstraction, but still, the map operation gets one file and output three files. So it map one file to three files and eventually the client or the user gets three files as, as the result. Now, each pipe starts with a reader. The reader is responsible to supply data to the rest of the pipe. And the most basic unit that pass through this pipe, we call it record. And the record can be many things. It can be string, it can be hash, a dictionary, list, a basically whatever you want. So more generally, each gear function, each pipe of operation contains as the first operation the reader that supplies data. Then it has zero or more operations that modifies the data. And it always ends with an action. An action can be one of two things. It can be run, which tells Redis Gears, please run it now and give me the results. And it can also be register. Register means I want to run this uh, function whenever an event arrives, a key change, a, a data arrives to a Redis stream. And we have many types of events and, and I will talk about it. So what are those readers? So we have, uh, we can say five types of readers. Uh, we have the keys reader and the keys only reader that re basically reads keys and values from Redis. You can also use the keys only reader for performance. If you don't need the value, there is no point of reading the value and the keys only reader will supply, uh, will supply you only with the keys name. Now we have the stream reader. The stream reader is uh, basically can, can read the Redis stream data type and give you the data inside the stream. We have the Python reader. Uh, the, the Python reader allows you to write readers in Python. So you can basically uh, read from wherever you want. You can read from a file system or from another database, even from another Redis. And we have the, uh, the shard ID reader. The shard ID reader is good when you need to distribute a task to all the shards. You want to do something on all the shards. So the shard ID reader starts the, the function on all the shards and the record that it supply, the, the, the first and the only record that it supplies is the shard ID. From there you can change this record, you can read data from this shard, you can change data on this shard and you can do whatever you want. So those are the readers. What are the operations that you can do? So we already talked about the mapper operation that maps a record to another record. But you can also have kind of expander, it's called flat map, that it can map one record to multiple records. You have filter, that, you, that, that you, can, you can filter out some of the records that you don't need in the results. And you have accumulator, accumulator allows you to accumulate data. It maps multiple records to a single record, and this single record can be uh, the sum of all the data, or an average, for example. And uh, Basically, you can do whatever you want. So, um, let's talk about the components of Redis Gears. So, I already said that Redis Gears runs an embedded Python interpreter, and this embedded Python interpreter can it, it basically interacts with Redis Gears core for, uh, with the C API. The Redis Gear core provides a C API to interact with it. Now. You can interact directly with the CAPI, or you can write a Python that interacts with it. The, the Redis Gear cores is a components. Has a, it has a three components. Uh, the first component is Gears Executor. Executor responsible to execute your Redis Gear function on events or immediately if you use the run function. Uh, and uh, it's responsible to register for keys notification, for example, and execute your function whenever a key changes, for example. We have the coordinator. The coordinator make, uh, make sure that uh, the, the execution, the, the function that you do runs as efficient as possible, as, in, as close to the data as possible. It has the mapping of the shards, it has the key slots of each shard, and it knows which key 
uh, belongs to which shard, so it knows where things need to run. Uh, and we have the engine. The engine is uh, the component that executes your logic, that runs your mapping, that runs your filter, uh, that runs your uh, group I and reduce operation that you put inside the gears function. So those are the, the components of Redis gears. We are soon uh, hope to uh, provide more languages support, so for example the JVM, which will give us uh, all the JVM languages such as Java and Scala. And we are also planning to support WebAssembly. And I will talk about it uh, in the end about future plans. So, I want to start uh, with examples. Uh, I don't want to show it uh, in slides, so I will move to the CLI. Okay. So, I will start a, a oh, okay. I will start a Redis uh, server uh, with Redis gears inside it, and uh, as you can see, a uh, Redis gears is loading. It's is loading into Redis. It writes it writes some uh, some some logs into it, like uh, some configuration that it started with, and uh, and stuff like this, and the location of the Python interpreter. Um, so. I said before that in order to, basically what Gears has, allows you is to create a pipe of operations. And this pipe of operation can uh, be created either using the C API directly or using Python. So we are going to use uh, the Python API to create this pipe of operation. But before I will do this, I want to put some data inside my Redis. So let's put some simple string keys in my Redis, x1, y2, and z3. Now I want to create the pipe of operations. So basically what I need to do is to send the Python code to Redis. And the way to do it is using the pyexecute command that gets a Python code and runs it on Redis. I can write whatever Python code I want. So if, if, for example, I will write print with the word foo, and I will run it, I'm getting an OK reply. The thread is says this code runs successfully. And you can see the thread is output foo to the STD out. But in order to really create a pipe of operation, I need to use the gears builder. The gears builder creates an empty pipe with only reader. And the default reader is the keys reader. So if I will run it now, I'm getting all the keys and all the values inside Redis. The second, the, uh, the, the second location of the result, the, the, this empty array is basically if there is any errors occurred during the run of the, of the gears function, then I will get those errors here. But no errors happen, so I'm getting an empty, empty array. So what if I want to get uh, only the values? So I need to add a map operation to my pipe. And the map operation gets a lambda function or any Python function. Um, and this lambda function maps the records to another record. So my record is, let's call it R. And we want to map it to the value. So if we will run this, you see that we are getting only the values. Same thing, I can get only the keys. Now, what if there are th there was more data types inside my Redis, and I still want to get only the strings? So let's put some more data. Let's put a hash, and let's also put a list. So if I will run my empty pipe again, you can see that I'm getting all the keys and the values. And this time I, I also get in the hash, and I can see that the type is a hash, and the value is actually a Python dictionary. And I'm also getting the list, and the type is a list, and the value is a Python list. So you can see that there is a correlation 
between the data type on Redis and the value that you are getting uh, from the Python interpreter. Now, what if I don't want to get the, the hash and the list? What if I want to get only the strings? So what I can do is I can add a filter operation with a lambda function again. The lambda function is the filter function. And basically, I just need to, to tell it what I want to get. So I want to get records such that the type is equal to string. And now I'm getting only the strings. And again, I can now get just the values with my simple map operation. Nice. I can also sort it if I want it sorted. I can limit the number of results if I want to get only the first result. Let's get sort and limit. So I will get the first result sorted. So this is nice and you can do many things using this capability of creating a pipe of operation that, uh, that change your data a little each time. And uh, I want to show you a more uh, concrete and uh, real example. I call it the IMDB example. So uh, let's flush the data. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put uh, some real data into my Redis. Um, so let's see what we, what we have. If we use the scan, we can see that we have keys. Each key basically contain data about a movie. So we can get a look at what's inside this key with, an, with the command hgetall. And we can see that we have many uh, properties to the movie. We have the original title, but what I, want to, you, what I want you to look at is the genres property. The genres contains a list of, a, a comma separated list of genres uh, belongs to this movie. So what if I want to count for each genre, how many movies it has? Assuming that uh, one movie can have multiple genres. So let's start and let's try to do it with Redis Gears. So let's start again with an empty pipe, but this time we will use the keys only reader because we don't really want to read all the values. Um, we just we just want to to read uh, the genre. So I just I will just limit uh, the number of results I get, so we will not see many many results on the screen. And you can see that I'm getting only keys. Now what I will do is I will map these keys. Sorry. I will map them and I will read the genre. So how will I how will, how can I read the genre? I can execute a command on Redis, and I can read the genre property from the hash. Like this. So you can see now that I'm getting the genres, but it's still a comma separated, and each record contains multiple genres, or might contain multiple genres. So I want each record to be a single genre, and then I can count it. The way I can do it is using a flat map, which is a one-to menu operation. It maps one record to many records. And the way I want to, to map it is by splitting the record by a comma. Sorry. It's split. <coughs> okay. So uh, you can see that I'm getting a list of, uh, of, uh, of genres. And now all I need to do is to use the count by operation, which is a built in inside Redis. And I'm getting for each genre how many times it's appeared. So all I need to do now is to remove the limit and count it all. Nice. So I'm getting for each genre how many times it's appeared. The 
even more cool thing about it is that it's totally uh, agnostic to your deployment. So if I will start now a Redis cluster, so my Redis cluster contains three shards, and I will put the same amount of data in this cluster. And I will run the same gears function, I will get the same results. So this is nice. You can write your gear function and if you run it correct if you if you write it correctly, then you don't need to change it when you move between deployments. When you run single shard or when you run multiple shards, it will run the same. So, let's continue. Yeah. Okay. So, I showed you that it runs the same on three single shards or on multiple shards, so I want to explain to you how it works behind the scene. So, let's get this uh, count distinct, uh, for example, and the uh, that we showed now in 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 the IMDb example. So the first uh, things is that Redis each each gear that runs on each shard uh, extract the records from Redis. So here we are getting all the values uh, on this shard, and on shard two we are also getting all the values on this shard. Now there is a reshuffling stage. The reshuffling stage makes sure that all the records that belong to the same group will be located on the same shard. <coughs> Sorry. So here, for example, shards, shard 1 uh, got all the records with the value 2. Shard 2 got all the records with the value 1. And, and, and the value 3 just stayed on, on shard 2. And then each shard can execute the reducer, the count, uh, locally. So shard 1 says that the value 2 appears 3 times, shard 2 says that the value 3 appears 1 time, and the value 1 appears 2 times. And in the end, we collect all the records to the shard that started the function, and this shard can return the uh, records, the results, to the, uh, to the client. So this is how it works on cluster. More generally, uh, what, what Redis Gears do is it tries to, to do as much as possible on the local shard. All the operations that can done locally, that can be done locally, like map and filter, are executed locally on each shard. Then if we see that there is a, a, an operation that needs reshuffling, such as group by, count, and stuff like this, we reshuffle the data, and the reducer once again is executed locally on each shard. When the execution finish, uh, the shard that started the execution, we call it the initiator, it returns, it, it gets, it, it uh, collects all the results from all the shards, and it returns the results to the user, to the client. Okay, so now we can talk about event processing with Redis Gears. What, we sh what I show you until now is how you can do batch processing, how you can run a Redis Gears function on your data immediately. But Redis Gears also allows you to interact on events. Uh, some of the events can be keys changes. You can interact whenever a key change, a key created, a key deleted. You can also interact on stream events, like a data arrives to the stream and you want to read this data and do something with it. So I want to show you a, a simple example of what you can do with it. So I will start my Redis server with Redis Gears again. And uh, I will create again a pipe of operation with the pi execute command. And what I want to say is I want uh, for each key, this is a for each operation, it, it does an operation on each record that, that runs through the pipe. And what I want to do 
is I want to just execute a delete on the key and instead of running it now I will use the register okay sorry I need to connect to this and not to cluster okay so what will happen now is that each time a key is, will be written to Redis, Redis Gears will immediately delete this key. So let's try it. You can see that X is not there. Redis Gears deleted it. Another thing that you can do is you can put, instead of deleting the key, you can put an expire on the key and you can do an automatic expire. Uh, such that each key that written to Redis it automatically gets an expiration. Uh, you can do many things with it and I want to show you one of the things that we did uh, we call it a uh, right behind. So basically what you can what we achieve with this capability of a uh, follow or uh, inter in, uh, react on keys changes is the ability to write the changes to another database. It can be a MySQL database, it can be an Oracle database. And the way it works is like this. The user run, uh, write a key, a hash, to the Redis. The, the hash change is trigger a, the first gear function that write this change to a Redis stream. The, the writing to the Redis stream triggers another gear function that gets the data from the stream and writes it to the DB, to, the, to another database, to MySQL, for example. Uh, the reason that we split it to two uh, Redis gears function, functions is because this stage is very, very fast, and this stage might be slow, because writing to this, to, to MySQL, for example, is slower than writing to Redis. So we don't want this uh, stage to be delayed because this stage is taking longer. So what happens here is that you can continue writing uh, to Redis while Redis gears uh, write the data in the background to the target, to MySQL, for example. And uh, let me show an example. So I will just uh, I will just restart because I have already a register operation. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? Uh, I'm going to. Sorry. I'm going to write to run uh, this simple. I don't need those. I'm going to run this simple uh, uh, gear function. I'm going to give it to Redis Gears. And what this function does basically, it tells Redis Gears, register on all keys that starts with the prefix person and write them to a MySQL table persons that has primary key person ID. And I want those mapping. I want the first name to be mapped to the value first on, the, on MySQL, last name to last, and edge to edge. And I already prepared in advance a, a, a table called persons with person ID, first, last, and edge. So let me run this, uh, this gear function, sorry. So the way I'm running it is using a gear CLI and I'm giving gear CLI the example that I just showed you and I'm telling it I have a sorry yes I'm telling it that I have two requirements that I need in order to run this example the, to run this gear script um, the first requirement is this, which is the rgsync uh, library. It's the implementation of register to keyspace event. 
write to the stream, register on stream and write to the database. And I also need a Py uh, MySQL library that allows me to connect to MySQL and to perform queries on it. Now I will run it and you can see that as I run it, Redis Gears install those requirements before it runs my gear functions. And when it's done, it runs my gear functions function. So we are done, we are finished. And if we will do dump execute dump registration to show all the registration that I have on Redis, on Redis Gears, you can see that I have two registration. The first registration is the keys reader, and the second registration is the stream reader. The keys reader reads a keys that starts with prefix person and write them to the stream. The stream reads from the stream. Uh, the stream name is, uh, is this. It's, it's also a prefix uh, to support uh, multiple shards. And, uh, and it writes it to, to the MySQL database, to the persons table. So let's try to write some data. Let's do an 8 set to person 1 with the first name foo, last name bar, and age of 20. So if we will run this and we will do dump registration again, you can see that I have a one trigger execution and one successful execution on my keys reader because I wrote a key. And you see that I have also successful execution on the stream reader, so it's successful and trigger. The reason is that it's free is that the first time we run it to, uh, to execution because uh, we want to make sure we're not missing keys. So there, there are some background operations there. So it shows free, but the next time it will only increase by one. Um, so this is nice. If I will do age get all on uh, per sen, sorry. Uh, one, uh, you can see that I'm getting the values, but also if I will go to MySQL and do select on the table, you can see that I'm getting also the values. Now, the even nicer thing about it is that Redis Gears allow you to register on deletions. So if I will delete person one, you can see that it's not there anymore, and you can see that it was also deleted for MySQL. So this allows you to sync between Redis and another database. In this example, MySQL, get advantage of the high performance that Redis provides, but still write your data in the background to the other database, to MySQL. So this is the example of the right behind. Uh, I want to talk to you uh, a little about Redis Insight. So I showed you before that uh, I have the RG dump registration, for example, and I get some data about the registration. What Redis Insight is, allows you to do is to see it uh, in a more easy way. Like it will show you all the registration, it will show you all the executions, and it will also allow you to run the Python code in Redis Insight and send it to Redis to, to run on, on Redis Gears. So this is coming soon on Redis Insight. It will be very easy to write the gears function in it, see what's happened, see what register, see if there are any errors, any issues. Uh, it will be very good and, and easy to develop with it. Last thing, uh, I want to talk about what we are planning for the future of Redis gears. So security, uh, is a thing when, when, when we talk about Python interpreter embedded inside Redis. Uh, if, we have it, if, if, you, if you have it all uh, closed and uh, no malicious user can connect to your Redis and only you, you make sure that only you run a gear function on the Redis using an authentication and SSL, then there is no issue. That you, you will not do a malicious things to yourself. Uh, but we still want to, to, to be better and to, 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 get, uh, to, to do something more. So we are planning to uh, sandbox the Python interpreter using a WebAssembly. The WebAssembly will basically isolate the run 
of the Python and it will allow us to control what the Python does, what the Python can do and what the Python can't do. Regardless of this, we want to add the, the, the WebAssembly to support more languages, uh, not only Python. And we also want to put the JVM so we will support Java, Scala and all the JVM languages. Uh, another idea that we have is that we want to support a query language for Redis Gears, for those who don't want to write code. Um, so we are planning to support a query language to allow you to, to, to run, to create a pipe using some query language, some DSL. And uh, we hope that it will also be faster because we will implement it in C. It will be implemented in C. Um, so those are the future plan. Uh, I think it's very cool and uh, stay tuned because uh, there are very cool stuff coming up. Uh, thank you and uh, if you have any question, questions, uh, I, I'll, be, I'll be there live so you can ask me. Uh, thank you very much and uh, hope you are going to use Redis Gears.